today we're making one of my favorite comforting soups and that's a slow roasted tomato soup with the cheese toasty. I turn to this meal more times than I can count. My partner absolutely loves it, especially when he's feeling under the weather because it's so nourishing, cozy, comforting. It can be eaten any time of the year, but I particularly love eating it in winter and making it extra indulgent with that cheese toasty. So what we need today to get started is a lot of overripe tomatoes. And I do say use overripe tomatoes because they're just gonna be juicier and sweeter and when we roast them away, it's gonna release all of that beautiful flavor. I like to add garlic into my soup, of course. I do one to two whole bulbs that I slow roast with those tomatoes and it just makes that garlic really creamy and soft and it doesn't have that raw, pungent garlic taste. So it is okay to go a little bit harder on the garlic and double, if not triple, the amount. We've got some onions and then I'm using some sweet red peppers, some chicken stock, we've got some fresh herbs that we're gonna throw in there and then we finish it off with a little drizzle of cream. And that is optional, but highly recommended because it just elevates that soup to that extra creamy level. To make the soup today, you need a large roasting tray. And I like to use a large one because I like to fit as much of the vegetables in there as possible, just because I always like to make a large batch of this to have in the freezer or the fridge to eat throughout the week. So as I said, we're gonna use really ripe tomatoes. I always have tomatoes sitting on my counter bench because the longer they sit out, the riper and the juicier and the sweeter they get. So we're just gonna cut those in half. And we're using about probably like 800 grams to a kilo of tomatoes. It does take a fair bit of them, but that's why we call it tomato soup. And you can use any variety of tomato that you like. I'm using trust tomatoes here, but Roma would work a little bit better because I find them a little bit juicier. They're just a bit more on the expensive side if you're in Australia. Okay, I think that might be enough because we don't want to overcrowd our pan. So as I said as well, we're going to be using two whole bulbs of garlic. I'm just going to cut those in half. And don't freak out about the amount of garlic that is in this soup. It, when it slow cooks, it gets really creamy and almost sweet. And then I'm just going to use some sweet peppers, but you can use capsicums or peppers if you're based in America. I just like slow roasting these ones because as the name suggests, they're a little bit sweeter. So just halve them and remove the seeds. And then we're also going to add some onions. You can actually quarter them because that way they'll cook a little bit quicker. But this is such a versatile soup. You can take away any elements, like you can take away the sweet peppers or a little bit of garlic. You can add anything else in that you like. If you want to use some red onion, they would work perfectly as well. All right, so we have chopped up all our vegetables and now we're just gonna season them. You do want to double the amount of seasoning, so you need quite a fair bit of salt. And it does look like a lot, but don't worry, it's not gonna to be too salty. A fair bit of pepper. You can put some chili flakes in there as well if you like your soup to have a little heat. And then a very generous amount of olive oil. And I know I say that a lot, but when we're working with vegetables and we don't have something like a fatty piece of meat that we're cooking with, there's no fat in here. And fat is what makes your food delicious. So I like to use a healthy fat like olive oil and I always up it when I'm not using something like beef or pork or anything fatty in my meal. So I'm gonna do about three to four tablespoons. And I'm telling you now, this is what makes this dish just so delicious. And then to finish off, I'm just gonna put in some rosemary. And look how beautiful that is. And now we're just gonna roast it. I think I roast it for about an hour at 160 degrees Celsius, but I'll have to double check that. Actually, I will double check that. Yeah, okay. Sorry, it's 170 degrees for an hour, and we're just gonna pop it in the oven now. While our tomatoes roast away for our tomato soup, I'm gonna get started on the cheese toasty. And this is quite a special cheese toasty. It's not your regular one. I like to make a mayo mixture that goes inside the bread, not on top of the bread. Although I will use mayo to spread on top of the bread as well, because that's what gives it that golden and crispy outside layer. So for that inside mixture, we're gonna need some mayonnaise, about half a cup of it. That goes in there. And then I'm just gonna season that with a little salt, some onion powder, 
just about half a teaspoon of onion powder. And we have to put the garlic in there somehow. So I'm gonna put some garlic powder as well. And I think this will give us about two, maybe four toasties. You can always double it if you're making uh, this soup for a few more people. And then I'm just gonna put a little bit of Parmesan in there, or maybe a lot actually, because this is a cheese toasty. Oh, yum. I'm gonna put a little bit of black pepper too. I'm only gonna be making two toasties today, so we don't need a huge amount of that. For my toasty, I'm just gonna use plain sandwich loaf white bread. When I do make these, I sometimes use a beautiful sourdough bread. You can also use ciabatta if you like, but there's something about plain, cheap sandwich bread that just makes your toasty a little bit extra special. So we're gonna start by putting mayo on the bottom layer. So just a little spread of that. And this is a little trick to making the best toasty. It's better than putting butter or olive oil on the outside. Using that mayo makes it so golden and crispy. And it's actually a little trick that my mother-in-law taught me. So Sharon, if you're watching this, shout out to you. And then we'll flip those over because that's the outside layer. Now to get started on the cheeses, I'm gonna use a Swiss cheese mozzarella. Might just put a little bit of extra Parmesan as well, but I really love putting Swiss cheese on my toasty. It's got a really distinct and sharp flavor that I think just makes it that little bit extra special. And now I'm gonna get my mayonnaise mixture and spread that over the Swiss cheese. So you need about a tablespoon and it's almost like a quick bechamel sauce, this one. And then I'm gonna put some mozzarella cheese on there. And this is that really gooey cheese that's gonna melt away and give you that beautiful cheese pull. And usually I would put a slice of Gouda, but I don't have that today. So I'm just gonna do just a little bit of extra Parmesan. And then we just top it with our bread. And so now we're gonna toast these in a cast iron pan with a little bit of butter and olive oil. I like using all the fats when I make a toasty. And we're gonna serve it up with our roasted tomato soup and it's gonna be so good. I've pulled those vegetables out of the oven and my house smells so cozy and comforting. I can't wait to turn this into a delicious tomato soup. You'll see that all of those juices have escaped from the tomatoes. The garlics are still soft and tender and those onions are beautifully tender as well. And we're just gonna throw it all into a pot now squeeze out those garlic cloves, put a little bit of chicken stock or vegetable stock if you wanna keep this vegetarian and simmer it away for 20 minutes. And I'm just gonna remove those rosemary stems as well because we don't want the stalk in the soup. So we're just gonna uh, take the leaves off the stalk just like this. All right, and now we're just gonna transfer that into a pot. And look at all those stunning juices. That is where the flavor lives. And before I put the garlic in, I'm just gonna let it cool a little bit just so we can handle it and squeeze out all of those beautifully soft and tender cloves. So while my garlic cools, I'm just gonna put the chicken stock in there. And this is a homemade chicken stock that I've made, but you can use store-bought very easily with this. And as I said, you can stay vegetarian as well if you like, so you use a vegetable stock. So this is still frozen, but that's totally fine. That's one liter in there. And then I also just want to season it a little bit more with some basil. Now we have seasoned those tomatoes quite generously. Your soup may need a little bit of extra salt and pepper, but just taste it as it's cooking and season it to your liking. The garlic is cool enough. And now this is where the ASMR magic happens. Oh, look at all that. Yummy. I'm gonna start that on a high heat, bring it to a boil, and then we're gonna reduce it to a low simmer and simmer it for about 20 to 30 minutes or till it's at a consistency of your liking. While the soup is simmering away, I'm gonna start toasting those cheese toasties because I do like to cook them quite low and slow. That is the key to getting that golden crispy outer layer. There are no Gordon Ramsay burnt toasties in this house. So I've got a cast iron pan. I'm just gonna get some butter and just a little drizzle of olive oil. And I know that you might be thinking there's mayonnaise, there's butter, there's olive oil, but I always like to use olive oil when I'm using butter because it just prevents it from burning. And then pop my toasties in. Get them cooking in my little butter bubble bath. 
And now we're gonna leave them for about, and I know it sounds like a long time, but probably five minutes each side, even a tad longer if you wanna cook it even lower and slower, because that's just gonna ensure that all that cheese melts and we've got a beautiful golden outer layer. Okay, so this has been simmering for about 20 minutes and it is looking at a good consistency for me. And now you can pop it into a blender, but I would just let it cool a little bit before you do that. But I'm actually just gonna use an immersion blender or a stick blender, and we're gonna blend it up until it's all beautifully smooth and velvety. A blender would actually get it a little bit smoother, but I love using my stick blender for a soup. Oh, yum, it smells so good. You can put a little bit of cream in it at this point, but I just like to drizzle a little bit on the top at the end, but you could mix it up with the soup when you're blending it in. But personally, I don't think you need a lot of cream in this because it's just so tasty and creamy anyway without it. All right, I did get a little cocky with my cheese toasty statements that I wouldn't burn them and I did burn them. <laughs> I think I had a little bit too much going on that I forgot about them, but that's okay. They're still gonna taste absolutely delicious. They are beautiful and crispy though, that's for sure. Okay, we still have a beautiful crispiness. Oh, you can see that cheese is melted, so I'm just gonna cut into it. Oh, yum, look at that. So gooey and beautiful. Now all that needs to be done is to plate it up. So I'm going to scoop it into my big soup bowl because there's nothing better than sitting on the couch with this bowl of soup while watching a good movie or TV show. And as I said, the cream is optional, but I do like just a little drizzle at the end. Some fresh basil leaves, a little fresh crack of pepper. And there you have it, the perfect tomato soup with the perfect cheese toasty. Well, almost perfect. We did get a little bit burnt in some spots there, but it still tastes absolutely delicious. And now I'm gonna dip that toasty in. Mm. Mm. That is really good. <laughs> that is very comforting and nourishing and just so, so yummy. So this is how I like to eat my tomato soup and I hope you like to eat it this way too because I don't think you can get any better than this. If you liked this recipe, please like and subscribe and follow for more. And if you made it at home, please let me know in the comments. I absolutely love reading about everything you make of mine. It just makes me so happy. So thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.